Hello, everyone. It's Chrissy and Tanner from Common Sense Education. We're back. Here we are, just like we are every Tuesday, coming to you with helpful tips, tools, news, you know, whatever you need, we're here for you. And you can go ahead and check out Common Sense Education and see what we have. I'll tell you right away up front, you're going to find articles, reviews, curriculum. I mean, so many things that you can use in your classroom. But today we're here because Tanner has a tool that he's going to show you that is amazing. Tanner, what is it? Yeah, you'll also find this review of Teachable Machine at commonsense.org slash education. Uh, this is another weird one for me that's going to be hard to illustrate. So this is this is high level of difficulty today, folks. Um, Weirder the better. Yeah, but I think weird. I think this is something you won't have seen before if you're a teacher. And that's a tool that I would argue its best use is helping to illustrate to your students who might be in grades three through 12, although I'd say 10 towards maybe the upper end of that spectrum, um, illustrate to them how machine learning works, basically. I think you can do more than that, but this is really best for just kind of illustrating the concept of machine learning. Um, and this is a product by Google, kind of one of their experiments that they released to the public. And we thought it was pretty neat, although it is designed clearly by engineers who may not fully understand the complexity with which what they're, wor what they're working. What um, do you mean? What does that ever happen before? So there's terminology. There's kind of some expectations here. But let me just show you how easy it is to essentially get started with this. Um, so here's the website, uh, Teachable Machine dot with google dot com this is a free thing to use and you go to the site and they do have a video for you that illustrates like, the basics of what you'll be doing they also have um, some tutorials here which i would recommend these kind of break down the basics but let me just show you let me do a tutorial for you live um, and we'll see how this works. Um, so when you click this get started button here, you're going to fly into this. Now, get ready to be looking up my nose here because we're looking at a, another <laughs> um, angle on a different webcam. But what you're doing, so the, way, the basic way machine learning works is you feed a bunch of data into the thing, which Google's machine learning product is called TensorFlow. And that's what you're using here. This is what your students will be using is a Google designed machine learning project. Um, and now my phone's listening to me um, <laughs> and learning. <laughs> um, but Perfect. you feed a bunch of data into TensorFlow. And then, oh my God, it's my phone. Is, <laughs> did you hear that? I didn't hear what it said. Okay, it, so, did it ask you if you're enjoying TensorFlow? Yeah, something along those lines. <laughs> it's like, we know you're looking at a teachable machine right now. Would you like to uh -huh. see something related? Um, uh -huh. And thank you for uploading a million images of your face, by the way. <laughs> um, which is a good note. If you're using this in the classroom, we wrote this in re your review, in our review. A little privacy concern here with student. You may want to keep their faces and voices out of this. Uh, but you upload a bunch of data into the machine. And then the machine can, f can begin to make predictions about the data you've uploaded. So you can see here, I've uploaded a bunch of images of my face. And you can, you can use your webcam or your microphone to put data in here. So you can do sound-based learning or image-based learning. They also have a pose um, version, which is about kind of a full body image. So you can have the machine start to recognize like hand signals or gestures or even dance movements and that kind of thing. But we're, the example I'm gonna be giving you is just recognizing images um, from the webcam. So I've, um, 
uploaded a bunch of images of my face here and then labeled it as Tanner. So I'm going to be training the machine to recognize this these images as me. And then what you do is you then can um, have them recognize other images, like, let's say, a cat. Yes. Um, so we're, and I haven't tested this. I have, so I have a cat and I have a uh, chipmunk, oh. which look a lot alike. Yes, so I'm, right. I'm, we'll be interested to see how this works out. But um, so let's do the cat. And then okay. essentially you, you, let me get, I'm going to have to get my face out of here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that and, cat is Tanner. And then you start to record images oh. of the cat and my hand. You know, there's better way to do this clearly. <laughs> um, you know, just feed in a bunch of data. And then you can begin to train your model. So we've tra we're training, we're uploading the data. And there are like, there's all kinds of little tweaks and stuff you can do to get even more in depth. I'm not gonna bore you with that right now, but there are some other little things you can modify here. And then once you've created your, once you've trained your AI, your machine on these things, it will begin to predict down here what is being shown and clearly it's doing a bad job of determining who it's it definitely at. thinks you're a cat which isn't well, bad oh maybe it's the oh. mic if I... see there no, oh yeah no. okay it no, knows no. it's you well, no, well we'll move the well, mic out of the way and, and move the cat as well we'll see how that works Oh, hey, that's, I mean, great, and it was okay. quick. Now, here's the fun part. Recognize. Let's just, because I'm legitimately curious, let's see how it does with okay. the chipmunk. Yep, yep, yep. And then we train our model. Cat versus chipmunk. The Oops. legends of old coming alive. <laughs> Who will win? It's head to head. Okay, now it's still thinking I'm a cat, I think. Um, <laughs> it's a compliment in my eyes. Oh, wait, let me scroll down so you can see the... Oh, oh, looks like I can't. Uh, well, you can kind of wait here. No. I don't know why you can't see the bottom there, but you can see the little purple. The chip oh, bottom. yeah, the purple. Yeah, we can see purple. Oh. See, it's, it, it, it can recognize. Wow. Wow, the future is here, folks. Yeah, um, that is, that's very interesting because it, it does open up discussions about what, you know, what part of the image is it the coloration differences the shape itself i don't know yeah and you know what i love about this is it like you know what you saw here can be a, a nice little kickoff to some larger discussion or lesson it's just a nice illustration of how this stuff works Right. You can very quickly do a demo in front of your class that shows the basic logics of these things that for our students in classrooms will be increasing. I mean, it's already hugely important. You see when people are sharing these AI generated art images on social media has been a big thing lately. Um, I forget what it's called. It's like mini me or something. Do you know that, Chrissy? I know. I'm not sure. I have seen them. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's like memes going around where people are feeding. You can feed in. Oh, it's Doll E Mini is what it's called. You can feed in any prompt into this AI art generator, and it will spit out an image of its interpretation of what that prompt means. Usually, you know, a thousand percent creepy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, yeah. You know, Nightmare and all this stuff is creepy. It. Like, let's admit it. Yes. Um, and it also, yeah. you know, it introduces um, discussions of privacy but it helps to explain these basic logics of how these technologies work. Now, 
you can for advanced classrooms, advanced students, if you're in a um, computer science kind of context, if you have students who are really into coding, um, you can export this um, oh. and do things with it. So you, sh you can get the code onto GitHub, you can share it with others, you can, do, you can um, actually put this into the TensorFlow applications and start to like make applications out of this code that you generate from this product. There's also, um, you know, a big weakness of this is it's not really well designed for classrooms, but they are adding things that help you um, implement actual lessons. So they do have, if you scroll down the main page, these three examples here. They are from like MIT, so they can be a little maybe college level. Um, there is this Ready AI lesson though that is better tuned to, um, you know, I'd say like high school classrooms probably a, a little course you can you can go through here. They say six to eight. I don't know about that. Maybe um, <laughs> your mileage may vary, but I really like this. There's a really fancy website here by MIT. Um, a kind of five day sort of um, exploration of this. And they actually go from using the teachable machine to using pose to code and start to do like interesting artistic experiments, which I love about this. It's like creative coding, essentially. Um, so there are a few things to look at, um, but it's pretty bare bones. Um, but just neat. Like this really reminds me of the most likely machine that we talked about in a previous episode. I'll link it at the end. Um, you know, these are the future technologies that students will be using in their careers potentially. And any kind of um, resources we can highlight that show them how these things work, allow them to see the potential of it, the drawbacks of it, and maybe picture themselves working on these kinds of technologies in the future are to the benefit, right? This feels very current and interesting. So that's teachable yes. machine. Very relevant to kids. Um, and I know having, uh, since I've been working on uh, our programming and coding list, um, there are several platforms that have modules or lessons about AI. And so even if you're not teaching coding per se, I think there are lots of opportunities to have discussions, write essays about the ethics around yeah. it. And, you know, I think there's a cross-curricular, um, a set of cross-curricular opportunities there for sure. All right. Well, thank you very much, Tanner. Um, and also I hope that that chipmunk gets its own um, TikTok channel because it seems like it probably deserves yeah see i think it deserves one <laughs> all right come visit us at common sense education um we're here every tuesday tell your friends like comment and we'll see you next time <laughs> <laughs>